DJI have just released their new smartphone gimbal, the OM5. It's next in line to the throne occupied by the DJI OM4. The last two DJI OM gimbals were really the best in their class. So does the OM5 continue the winning formula? So I think by now everybody knows that the OM5 comes with an extending handle which looks an awful lot like a selfie stick. But what other differences are there? Let's spend some time and get deep and have a look at all the differences that come with the OM5. Should you buy one or should you just stick with the OM4? The design is sleeker and smoother with some shiny metal parts to add more of a consumer electronics look to it. And I think this shows where the smartphone gimbal market is heading. Thing is, when smartphone gimbals first came onto the market, they were very much a niche market for smartphone filmmaking enthusiasts. But the look of the OM5 suggests this is moving further into the mainstream user market. The OM5 uses the same magnetic clamp, but this time there's no option to stick it directly to your smartphone. So presumably not enough people enjoyed that option to make it worth repeating. Both the OM4 and OM5 have the same strength motors. They can carry a smartphone plus extras weighing 290 grams or less. One major change is that the battery is much less powerful. Whereas previous models lasted up to 15 hours, the OM5 battery lasts about six and a half hours. And that's because the handle extension takes up the space in the handle needed for a bigger battery. That also makes the OM5 somewhat lighter at 290 grams compared to the OM4's 390 gram weight. So that's like 25% less weight to carry around. The OM5 is also designed to fold smaller. This means you now can't fold up the gimbal with the magnetic clamp still in place. Whereas on the OM4, you could leave it there if you wanted. So personally, I usually do leave it on because that makes getting set up a bit quicker. You don't have to hunt around in your bag for the clamp. Note also that the end of the gimbal arm fits snugly into this new notch in the handle. And this notch also makes the handle a little bit easier to grip. The power on or M button is now located at the side of the gimbal. Instead, a new button has been introduced at the front for switching camera orientation. So one tap switches from rear to selfie camera and vice versa. Two taps switches the gimbal from portrait to landscape or vice versa. The handle is thinner than the OM4 handle, but it's just as long. So it doesn't make any difference to big hands. It also looks a bit less like the grip of a handgun, which we might guess is to make it more multi-gender friendly as well as making it smaller when packed away. Another difference is that the OM5 is designed so that when it's folded together, you need to lock it and then unlock it when you want to open it. Whereas the OM3 and 4 gimbals just simply pull open. The magnetic clamp is exactly the same size as the OM4 clamp. The only difference is that OM is now embossed on the rubber instead of DJI. The previous two versions of the Osmo Mobile gimbal had a touch sensitive control stick and this meant that you could press the control stick softly and get a slower pan so you could kind of control the speed of the pan or tilt by how much you pressed the control stick. Uh, it was a little bit tricky to use but still it was possible if you wanted to do that. But as soon as I used the OM5 control stick, I noticed it now has a definite click when you move it. So it's no longer touch sensitive. It's either moving the gimbal or not. The Mimo app was already on my phone because I already have a number of DJI devices which I use it for. However, when I tried to connect, it kept saying device not found. I could even connect directly with Bluetooth from my phone, but not through the Mimo app. So I checked the app and it said that I had the latest version, but then it turns out I needed to uninstall the app and then go back to the app store again and install it again. This way it made sure I had the latest version, which is 1.6. So to use the OM5, you must have the version of the app 1.6 or later. Once I had the latest version of the Mimo app, it connected fine. I had to go through all the usual permissions and newbie messages. The first thing I spotted in the app is the addition of HDR10. So this means you can now shoot Dolby Vision with your iPhone 12 and the Mimo app. However, it seems it cannot shoot Dolby Vision at 4K and 60 frames per second. 
Whereas the iPhone itself, just using the native app, can shoot Dolby Vision at 60 frames per second 4K. Well, at least on my 12 Pro Max anyway. On my Samsung Note 20 Ultra, when I go to the Play Store and check to see if the Mimo app needs updating, it says the app itself was last updated by the developers in November 2020, and that's only version 1.5.4. But then on the DJI website, it says version 1.6 is available for both iOS and Android. So I uninstalled DJI Mimo from my Samsung and then just downloaded it directly from the DJI website. And now I have the latest version of the Mimo app on my Android device. Again, I found that the Android version of the app does not have all the features contained in the iOS version. There's still no manual control and the new HDR10 mode is also not available, even though the Note 20 Ultra can shoot HDR10+. But the good news is that the new shot guides feature is available. And I'm sure that DJI made sure of that because they are really pushing the shot guides as a reason to buy the OM5. Also, on the DJI website, it says that the OM5 has Active Track 4.0, whereas the OM4 has Active Track 3.0. And it also says shot guides are available only for OM5. So does this mean that the two gimbals use a different version of the app? So that's something I will investigate later in the video. So those are the main differences between the OM5 and the OM4. So now I'm going to quickly run through the setup of the OM5 gimbal if this is your first time using it. So if you're new to DJI gimbals, the first thing you need to do is install the DJI Mimo app onto your smartphone. And if you're coming from the OM4 or other devices, you might want to delete and reinstall the Mimo app to make sure you have version 1.6. Now next, unfold the gimbal. So you need to swivel the top about 180 degrees first as this locks the gimbal in place. So make sure it doesn't slip around as you're trying to unfold it because basically it unfolds on the silver hinge. So just be careful not to pull it the wrong way and to do something nasty to your gimbal. The hinge itself is on a spring. So once it's open, it just locks into place without you needing to do anything. So at this point, you might find it easier just to quickly screw the mini tripod base into place. It just makes it easier to mount the phone this way. Now take the magnetic clamp and slip it over your smartphone. This is quite a big phone and it fits easily. So no problem with the clamp. Just make sure that the camera symbol is on the top of the phone and your phone's camera is placed on the left. Just follow this arrow. So the magnetic clamp should just snap into place, but you need to align the notch on the gimbal with the opposite part of the jigsaw, so to speak. So there's a small white dot on both to let you know you have it in the right place. Next step is to power on the gimbal. Like the OM4, it always boots up with the phone in portrait orientation. Now boot up the Mimo app and follow the instructions to connect the gimbal. It should show you a message saying the gimbal has been found. So just tap connect. If it connects successfully, at this point you're basically ready to get shooting with your gimbal. It's as easy as that. So I tried connecting to my DJI OM4 and opened the Mimo app version 1.6 and I can confirm shot guides are not there. So indeed this feature has kind of been restricted to the OM5. Whether that's because of design or just because DJI want to sell more OM5s, I'll leave you to decide that. Shot guides are a new feature which provides shot suggestions depending on your shooting situation. By default, the Mimo app is set to recommend shots automatically when it detects a certain environment. For example, when I was outside in the garden, the Mimo app suggested some nature type shots. If you don't want Mimo to do this automatically, you can go into settings and toggle it off. And once it's off, you need to tap the shot guide icon in the top left of the screen to open up the suggestions. While open, shot suggestions of various types are organized under headings. There's park, nature, beach, city, lifestyle, food and home. There's also subheadings under each of these. For example, park has couple, picnic and trip as subheadings. So choose a shot by clicking apply. Now the shot suggestion will sit in the left side of the screen playing in a loop. In one screen there is the shot suggested and in the other screen a demonstration of how to carry out the shot. 
And now when you apply any of these shot guides, Mimo switches to the appropriate gimbal mode. In this suggested shot, for example, you can see the camera spinning. And so Mimo switches you into spin shot mode. And yeah, that's pretty cool. At the same time, you'll now find you can't use the M button to change modes. To get access to the mode button again, you need to close shot guides completely. When it's open down like this, there's more headings and subheadings. For this shot in particular, the couple subheading has now become the main heading. And now I can swipe through all the subheadings that match shots to do with couples. That said, I don't see too many couples in these shots. They seem to be all about a guy with a gimbal filming his partner or no people at all. Some shots are very specific. For example, this shot is called Wave Hand and shows a guy filming a girl on a carousel waving her hand. The next shot along is called Couple Interaction, and I'm afraid it's not what you might be hoping for. In this shot, the girl beckons the guy towards her, raising her hand, and then the shot cuts. So it's a bit of a cliffhanger, I guess, and it's left to our imagination what happens next. Anyway, you can play around with those and explore. There's quite a few shots to choose from. So when you've had enough of that, click the back arrow to get back to the full shot guide screen. And then just to close that, you just tap the X there in the left corner. Another setting in the Mimo app, which I think is new, is the Auto FT. And FT stands for face track when using the selfie camera. If this is switched on, when you use the selfie camera, it will automatically search for your face and start tracking. So finally, let's look at this selfie stick. One of the unique features of the OM5 is that it comes with an extending handle. It's actually not the first smartphone gimbal with this feature, but it is unique amongst the Osmo mobile range. So is this a good thing? Is it useful? Let's find out. One advantage is we can create those nice crane shots or fake drone shots without having to add a monopod. Also, it has an advantage over a monopod in that you can still use the mini tripod base. So you can stand the gimbal on a table or on the ground with the handle extended. And with a monopod, you can't. And you can always add a monopod if you want to extend your reach. So yes, you could add a selfie stick um, and it would be just the same, right? Well, the thing is that all the weight would be at the top, so it's not going to be such a good balance. Another advantage is that if you're filming yourself sitting at a table with the OM4, you're probably going to have an angle up to your face unless you rested on something like a pile of books or something. With the OM5, you can sit the gimbal on a table and adjust the camera position to suit your preferred angle. And you can keep using the tracking feature. So just use the control stick to position yourself in the frame and the OM5 will keep you framed correctly. Just one little thing here, which is this little hinge where the selfie stick part attaches to the gimbal arm. When you push the arm back into the handle, it sits at a slight angle. So just make sure it's at this angle when you lock it. Another thing I noticed is that when the gimbal handle extension is kind of folded away and you have the gimbal sitting on the tripod base, the bottom motor is now at this slight angle. And if you try to pan left and right, it's not quite as smooth as when this bottom motor is level with the horizon. So if you're using the gimbal resting on a flat surface and you want to be able to pan smoothly, and that includes using the tracking feature, I would just make sure the arm is at least extended a little bit and the bottom motor is level with the surface. And actually, even when holding the gimbal in your hand, you might find it moves smoother with the motor just popped up a little and leveled out there.
But should you buy an OM5? I would say yes, because I think I would... I'm going to use this. I've got the OM3, the OM4 and the OM5. I'm definitely going to use the OM5 now. Uh, it just adds some extra things that you can do, some more, you've got a wider shot range with being able to extend the handle. And I'm going to experiment with that over the next few months and uh, see what can be done creatively. If you're on a tight budget, then of course stick with the OM4. It's not such a massive difference that you really have to have this gimbal. Now, if you want to learn more about smartphone filming, you can join us on Patreon, where I've got all kinds of downloads, podcasts about making of our Silent Eye series, which was all shot on smartphones. There's downloadable PDFs, guides, and you can chat to me there as well. So uh, thanks to the new patrons who just joined recently. Okay, ciao.